Lisa. Hi, hi, doctor. How are you? Oh, so um, great to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. I'm really excited. Are you excited to <laughs> yes. see your brain? I mean, yeah. As long as there's nothing weird there, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> you have a beautiful brain. Do I? You yes. Do. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> but it's busy. Very busy. So, let's go find out. Okay, let's let's figure it out. <laughs> I read your history. Mm-hmm. I looked at your scans. I just looked at your testing. Awesome. So I have a good idea what's going on. But I want to hear from you your goal. Okay. And how can I be really helpful to mm -hmm. you? I've been diagnosed with a uh, general anxiety disorder and uh, like low-grade depression. I've been on Zoloft for now, I think, two years. And I was on another one, two other ones before, but this is the one that has been fitting the most. But I still just don't, I just don't feel good. It's hard to explain, but it's like, I'm always tired. I'm just like, I still get like ups and downs. I don't know, I just don't like feel it's hard to explain, but it's like, I don't feel good. And like, I've learned how to cope with certain, like my anxiety was very physical. You know, I had like stomach issues. I had like jaw issues. Like I, I felt like my heart, like the palpitations that I even had a whole like heart scan. Cause I was like, there must be something wrong. <laughs> and so it's just, I still feel a lot of these things. A lot of it's more calm down, like the obsessive thoughts and all of that. But, you know, my trico, like I pull on my eyebrows and I like, and then I also feel like my muscles are just always so tense. And when did it start? My trico started when I was, I think, 15, if I can remember. But even before that, I had already like a lot of like body tics. Like I would do this with my eyes constantly. My parents even thought I had any like a problem with my eyes. Uh, but that kind of went away. I tend to pick a lot on my lips as well. And, and now I have a lot of like, I feel the need of doing certain like body movements. I still do them. It's sort of like tics, right? Yeah, I, I have one on my thumb this past couple of years. And I don't like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's, um, I don't know if it's because I just have so much tension everywhere that I feel like it just releases it. And uh, yeah. Anxiety got worse after the death of your grandfather, and that was five years ago? Yeah, a little bit over five, yeah, five and a half or something like that. Panic attacks, and fear of dying that happened yeah. shortly after that. And it's what was more interesting was because, you know, I obviously love my grandfather, um, but, you know, he's been sick, he had been sick for a really long time. So we've been waiting for him to pass away for a while so we kind of were expecting but i don't know must have something clicked and it just created this like fear of dying and i had other grandparents dying as well but i guess because one i was really young the other one was more um quick and i i don't i don't know what clicked in my brain but all of a sudden i just had this like big overwhelming like fear of dying i still have and i still like when i talk about it like makes me want to cry because it's the one thing that i still haven't been able how to deal with so the way i learn how to deal with is just not thinking about it what do you think happens to you when you die i think that's the problem i don't know <laughs> and it's like it's really terrifying if there is just nothing it's just like i think that's what scares me the most it's like it's just what if there is literally nothing and you're just like stopped existing for ever like ever like it's and that's just we raised religious at all 
Uh, I was raised Catholic. Uh, Me too. But I don't really believe in God. I like, like, yeah, I don't really believe in it. When did that happen? I've just always been very into science and it's just a lot of things that just don't make sense. And I just don't, I don't know. I just, I don't think I've ever really believed in it, to be honest. So it was more what your family did. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my parents aren't very religious, but, you know, I was baptized and I did First Communion and, and I had to go to church a few times. I think part of me hated to go to church. Also why I'm like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd rather be out with my friends playing. But, um, yeah, I just never really believed in it, I guess. But then that makes the thought of death even scarier. Yeah, and you know, like I can tell, like the thing that makes the most sense to me is reincarnation. Um, and that's the thought that makes it more bearable to me a little bit. But then it's like, I still don't know, you know. So I'm a person of science. And I think it's harder to not believe. Because to think you and I are here by random chance that has no design, that makes no sense to me, right? If I look at your eyes and I'm like, how does that make sense? Because there's a law in physics called entropy. Things go from order to disorder. And yes, there's a lot of chaos in the world, but there's also a lot of beauty <laughs> yeah. in the world. Tell me about the feeling someone's out to hurt you. I, I wouldn't say like hurt, but I always feel like someone is out to get me. Like, I just, I don't know. I've always had that feeling that like, yeah, even in my job, sometimes it just feels like people are against me. Is that true? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's always good to question your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have any tattoos, but if I got one, it would be, is it true? Mm -hmm. Like when I had a thought. It's not the thoughts you have that make you suffer. It's a thought you attach to mm -hmm. that make you suffer. Want to see your scans? Yes. So we did a study called SPECT, and SPECT looks at blood flow mm -hmm. and activity. It looks at how your brain works. And it basically shows us three things. Good activity, too little, or too much. Mm -hmm. And then my job is to balance it. If it's low, we can find ways to stimulate it. If it's too high, we want to calm it down. This is a healthy brain. Okay. And on the left, full, even, symmetrical activity. The top left, we're looking underneath the brain, just like this. Um, the bottom right, we're looking down from the top like this. And then one side. The other. Color doesn't mean anything. It's the shape. Okay. It should just be big and flat. The image on the right, color does mean something. Blue is average activity. Red is the top 15%. White is the top 8%. And you see all the white here in the cerebellum. Mm -hmm. um, it has half the brain's neurons. So that's why it's usually the most active. You have a lot of great brain function. I have seen a lot of But it's this little bumpiness. Why is that bump there? So, could be from a past concussion. It's not a big deal. I, I wouldn't, what I'd worry more about is why is it a little bit bumpy? Mm -hmm. And the things that could cause it, um, a lack of oxygen at some point, anesthesia, drugs, alcohol, mold. You're, you already told me you're environmentally very sensitive. 
Yeah. And so, or an infection at some point. Okay, we're gonna get that healthier. The cool thing is, over time, we can reverse it. That's the exciting thing. This is really interesting. So, remember, I told you I could see where you would、um, get stuck on things.、Mm-hmm. Your brain's gear shifter is right here. You like things a certain way, and if they're not, it just bothers you. Yeah. And, and it's not because you want to be that way. It's just your brain is wired. That、yeah. way, you also have a busy. This is called posterior cingulate gyrus, and that actually goes with intelligence. Finally confirmed it. <laughs> Whenever somebody says you don't have a brain, you go, "Nope, I do," and it's big, and it's and beautiful. Smart. <laughs>、um, so what I want you to take away from this is I have a beautiful brain. It's busy, and it looks like something's toxic.、Mm-hmm. So the first thing. With any toxic, is avoid it.、Mm-hmm. So if you're doing anything toxic, avoid it while we're repairing your brain. The cool thing is we can do it again in six months and go. How are we doing? Yeah. We did one of our、um, patients after two months, his brain was radically better, but it was way worse than your. You have a beautiful.、Yeah. Um, but it's busy. Yeah. Despite being on Zola, if. If you want, I'll teach you how to kill the ants. Okay. And, and where are the ants again? Automatic, negative thoughts. Okay. The、yes. thoughts that just come into your mind automatically and ruin your day. I'm gonna let you take him home. Oh yes. And I want you to put him where you can see him every day. And if you can write down twenty of your worst thoughts. Okay. I'll teach you how to get rid of them. Okay. It's so helpful. So, so whenever、good. you feel sad, or mad, or nervous, or out of control, you start writing down what you think. Okay. So what we're going to do? I'm going to give you these supplements.、Mm-hmm. So one of them is two packets, multiple vitamin, fish oil, and a brain boost. That、okay. should help your memory.、Um, I'm going to give you a probiotic to help your gut. Because、okay. there's a gut-brain connection. Yeah.、Uh, saffron, love saffron. Okay. Twenty-four studies showing it improves mood, like antidepressants.、Mm-hmm. You can take it with the Zola. Okay. And it should can help your libido, can help your mood and your memory. Great.、Um, and then I'm gonna give you magnesium. Okay. They're chewables, and、okay. I want you to take one to three a day. Okay. And the goal with the magnesium is lower your anxiety and decrease the ticks. You know, sometimes it's just nice to put like to understand a little bit more what's you know because it's it's it, it's all this past few months even years it's just like I just feel like something's just wrong and I don't really understand what something is wrong. Yeah, and we're gonna find it. We're gonna fix it. Yeah, great.